uh, we will be talking about the network infrastructure perspective. Uh, so cloud computing, past few days, uh, all of you have heard so much about cloud, you've discussed, and, and everyone knows what cloud is and what it does. Fundamentally, cloud is about services, and uh, if uh, we have to summarize, the analysts say that uh, services can be of three types, infrastructure services, where uh, enterprises like yourselves uh, rent the infrastructure. Give me a storage, give me certain server compute power, give me certain storage power, and that's the infrastructure services. Uh, there are a few other people who would like to develop applications and want to rent the platform, and those are the platform services. And then we have the application services, all too familiar. For service providers, it provides a new business opportunity. And for the enterprises, it's a new model to work. Instead of having to uh, spend money and develop the infrastructure, build and retain teams, this is a completely new way of uh, doing the business. But cloud services or cloud is not possible without uh, cloud infrastructure. And we've had uh, lots of discussions in the last couple of days uh, talking about the server side, the application side, the storage side. And now my predecessor here, uh, Amit, talked about the power side. Uh, whatever aspect we look at, there have to be two ingredients that has to be efficient, because if it's not efficient, it won't make any financial sense for the guy who offers for these cloud services. It has to be agile. Now, the agility element is very, very important here, because it has to deal with dynamic situations within the customer uh, uh, organization, and the demand has to be, it has to be elastic to accommodate the demand, certain fluctuation in the demand. So economic, scalable, secure, and dynamically shared resource, resource pools, those are the, the attributes of the cloud infrastructure, the infrastructure that will allow this to happen. But before we delve into it, let's take a look at what led to this. See, ultimately, cloud services or cloud infrastructure, there is always a data center behind it. But let's take a look at the evolution of the data center that will also give us clues about where it is going because the future will happen by solving the problems of the past and present. And, and that's what we want to take a look at. If you look at the, app, uh, the data center space, there are four things that have happened. There has been a tremendous application evolution. There has been virtualization of uh, uh, the compute power and the storage, they have, which has led to consolidation and it has been convergence. We'll take a look at each one of these. Let's take a look at the uh, application evolution and how it has affected the network traffic. Because we want to take a look at the network perspective. The earlier architecture in, uh, in a data center, or the earlier application architecture used to be client-server, where 95% of the traffic would be between the client who's trying to access an application and there's a server serving that application. And all the Processes within the server happen within that particular machine. Now, when, uh, the advent of internet and the explosion of users over the internet basically meant that something different had to be done in order to, uh, to enhance the experience of those web users. And therefore, we moved to another model, which is the services-based uh, model, the services-oriented architecture. Well, what we did is we took away the elements uh, from the server, from inside the server, and hosted them outside. So it basically means that the traffic pattern that used to be client-server, 95%, changed. And the traffic now is 25% between the client and the server, and 75% of the traffic happens for inter-process uh, issues. Inter-process traffic, traffic between uh, you know uh, the the storages and uh, various other devices that have to be accessed in order to uh, service the request of the client. So this is a fundamental change, and something has to change so that we can accommodate. The architecture has to change so that we can accommodate this change in traffic pattern. The other thing that changes is infrastructure virtualization. Let's take a look at that. We've seen that. Servers got consolidated, standardized, and finally virtualized. Because what we saw is that average utilization of the servers was around 10%. It couldn't have scaled. So it made sense that we use a pool of servers uh, for, uh, for a large group of users, which will where the utilizations will go up to 60 to 
and same happened with storage that got consolidated and finally virtualized. And this can ha also happen with other services in the data center, for example, the network and uh, security services, where we can consolidate those and then virtualize those and offer it as a service. So it will be a single network that will integrate the resource pool. This is where the trends are leading towards. We've seen that happen. And in order to enable the dynamic resource pooling, it is, that is one of the key things because one of the key reasons why uh, virtualization and consolidation happened is that we want to increase the resource utilization. And resource utilization has to be elastic because the changes are dynamic. That can only happen statistically if the pool is large. And therefore, that is, is a key uh, trend. They have to be larger pools, which will basically be more efficient and be able to accommodate more elasticity. While all this has changed, one thing that has not changed is the network architecture. It is still the same three-tier architecture that was basically designed for client-server traffic. It was designed for 95% of the traffic between server and client, and today, which is the north-south traffic. And if you look at this, the traffic actually is 75% east-west. So in order to give you a, a snapshot of how this is playing out in a data center, this is a typical data center architecture. You have uh, you know, the edge routers then connected to the layer 3, and on the downside there are servers connected to the switches. Uh, and, and there's a middle distribution layer, and there is servers and storage at the, at the edge. And if there are two servers, server A and server B, who have to communicate with each other, let's track a data, uh, data packet, how it travels. It has to go all the way up, up to the core switch, and then get routed back to server B. This is just one transaction that happens. Now imagine there are thousands of users that are trying to do a session, that are trying to access an application, where the servers have to talk to each other, 75% of the traffic, remember? That's the east-west traffic. And if the traffic has to go like this, there will be delays at every step. The more the number of boxes they have to traverse for getting routed, more the delays. That is what will happen if we are trying to do the, the present uh, uh, application or the present type of usage with an architecture that is dated, that has already served its purpose. So the problem with this is, there's a challenge of performance. These are too slow, very obvious. It, these, there are multiple hops, multiple devices through which they have to travel and then come back. Cannot scale. The second problem is complexity. Now, all of us know Metcalf's law, basically n square law, basically uh, which, which says that if there are n number of nodes <coughs> in the network, the possible interactions within the network will be n square. What it means is, in terms of management, is that it becomes very, very complex. Now, if we do a simple math for 1,000 users, 1,000 nodes, which is very normal, or 500, which could be the scenario in your organization, let's do the math and understand what we are talking about. This is mind-boggling. Because whatever the number of nodes you are going to, to install, it is going to be square of that in terms of complexity to manage. So it is too complex. It cannot scale. And third is efficiency. It's too expensive. Everybody has heard about spanning tree protocol here, right? STP basically is a technology that prevents loops happening within the network. How does it do that? It prevents 50% of the ports, it stops those ports from uh, sending and receiving, and therefore 50% of the ports in your data center at any given point of time, especially the distribution layer, are not functioning. And to add to uh, this, from, from a power perspective, there is a humongous number of boxes. So there is a large number of network boxes that are not connected either to the servers or to the storage, but are needed only for inter-switch connection ignored. And so far the problem has been that, that this architecture has been that whenever there is a problem, we add manpower to it. So it's like a Mongolian horde, and we tell them, here, go and solve this problem. Don't come back till the problem is solved. Obviously it's not scalable, and, and this, it's no wonder that they never come back because the problem is going to be increasing every time the number of users <coughs> increase. 
So let's take a let's take a step back and let's see. Okay, this is the situation right now. What do we do to address this situation? What if we had the freedom and there was a magic wand and we we were allowed to design something from the scratch? Let's look at what we have. Let's look at defining the ideal network in a data center scenario. Let's do that exercise. From a typical tree configuration which we have today, if we could move all the boxes to the periphery and allow them to be connected with each other through a single switch kind of a thing, that would be the, the ideal scenario. All the boxes, the servers, storage, the network service devices, management devices, everything connected to a single switch, single device in the network, n is equal to 1. If we were allowed to do that, that would be the ideal situation. Right? Which would mean that it would be very simple because it's a sing single switch. Any, any box to any box would be just a hop away. Right? But we know that a single switch, single box, however big at this point of time, can never scale. Right? So the solution would be, it has to be something like a fabric where a whole lot of such switches logically will work as if it's a single switch. So in this switch fabric, there will be from a data plane, plane perspective, it will be flat, single, and from a control plane perspective, it will be a shared state. All the devices there have the same state. So it is a fabric, but it is acting as if it is a single entity. That is actually the nirvana. All the devices will get connected, whether it's a server or a storage device or a network uh, uh, services device. It will recognize that this is a storage. It will recognize that this is a network device and accordingly do the switching inside. This is actually the ideal architecture because it will reduce the number of boxes, it will reduce the number of hops and will be the most efficient in terms of cost and energy and space. So where are we on this today? Because you know, on the first day we, we had um, uh, lots of uh, uh, people in the audience who, said, who were saying that cloud is okay, but today I have already made an investment. What do I do with that investment? And that's a very valid question because that cannot be wished away. First of all, let's take a look at where we are in terms of technology. Is this, is this nirvana really a possibility today or not? The answer is yes. There are technologies like virtual chassis technology where different boxes over a radius of say 70 kilometers can be made to look as if it's a single box. So even if it's a huge data center, it's not limited by the normal distance limitations of the cabling. Whether it's a, a, a you know, shielded twisted pair, unshielded twisted pair or fiber. So we have technologies that can do this kind of a thing. And if we had to start today with the kind of data centers all of us have, Let's take a look at how we can embark on this journey because that is the only practical thing to do. Nobody can expect people to uh, uh, take the boxes, throw it away and, and do something new. So let's take a look at this uh, infrastructure uh, uh, architecture design. We have, you'll see that these layers, these are the, the security device layers, these are, these are the fibers, these are the IDPs, these are the, this is the core layer. This is the distribution layer, we have just shown one row of boxes. These are the access boxes, these are the servers, and this is NAS. This is typically how a data center structure uh, setup looks from a networking perspective. What we can do is, we can start with consolidating the appliances. Take all the security appliances and consolidate those and put them in, in one side. And at the same time, we can look at virtual chassis at the excess tier. We talk about the virtual chassis technology that allows us to group multiple boxes and make them look like one. There's just one hop. So at the excess layer, if you, have, if you use virtual chassis technology, there is no need for a distribution layer. Because even if you add hundreds of boxes out there, you can make them look as if it's logically a single box. Right? And then, and finally, Today, what we can do is we can then consolidate those two layers and flatten the two layers of switching. So, with this, today, with what we have available, 
we have moved from a three tier architecture to two tier architecture and there there is a lot of saving in this there is significantly less number of boxes that we have to deal with there is significantly less uh, uh, amount of power that is being consumed less amount of space that is being consumed and finally we can we can add that this is a this is a juniper kind of a slide so i'll not talk more about this but we, what we could do is we could finally replace the uh, you know change the edges to mx because it will give a single uh, operating system and uh, uh, that has a lot of advantage because now we can what we can all the orange things that you're seeing can be logically seen as a single flat uh, network so finally this is how it will look like single fabric connecting all the devices in the data center which is actually the nirvana and this is something which is going to be available in quarter 4 this year the 3 2 1 strategy that we have we have uh, we were we uh, we have announced a couple of months back is this approach where you start with your three tiers today move it to two tiers in the interview and come december come quarter 4 of uh, uh, 2010 we can move it to a single layer so this nirvana is possible and in terms of the uh, reduction in complexity we can see the results here drastic reduction in the results because the middle layer has completely been converged the middle layer has been removed and we are not even quantifying the power in space uh, saving, uh, savings that can uh, result in this so cloud infrastructure which has to be always on and always responsive that is a reality today but that reality will be enabled only when we change, do some drastic changes in the data center uh, architecture. Thank you all very much.